Aloha, it's a creative name to stand out again here with a video. I played this game last Monday and it's 2,500 points, standard battle line, Dark Elves versus Ogre Kingdoms. You can just see I start off with my Dark Riders and my Hydra here in the right corner and we'll look at the rest of the board now. There's my 48 Spearmen with a level 2 Shadow Mage with a Dispel Scroll, 35 Executioners, my BSP with the Always Strikes First Banner, the Altar of Cain, and 24 Spearmen full command with a level 4 Metal Mage with a Sacrificial Dagger. Then I have Harpies on their flank and Dark Riders on the far edge. Both of the units of Dark Riders have crossbows and they will be vanguarding later up, later on. So here is my list and let's look at my opponent's side. Alright then, and then across from my Hydra and my Executioners respectively are seven Lead Belchers and five Mornfang Calvary. Uh, beside them, forming the center of his lines are 30 Noblars with shooting weapons of some sort. I think they're 12 inches long. And then they have his large unit of Iron Guts with four characters, which are a Bruiser with a BSB, not the, the magical one they usually take, a Slaughter Master, level 4, a Butcher, level 2, and a Tyrant. And then finally, here's the cannon that he has, and beside the cannon are my five shades that I've scouted already. And if I haven't mentioned already, I have an assassin, but they're in he's in the unit of spearmen. And so we move on to Vanguard moves. My first unit of Dark Riders here in front of the cannon, and then my other one I retreated behind my spearman unit. And so when I rolled up magic, my metal mage got Searing Doom, Enchanted Blades. Glittering Robe and Final Transputation. These are or, these are my favorite spells to roll up, so it was great to get them in this game against a tough opponent. And then for my level 2 shadow, I had Withering and Enfeebling Foe, which um, weren't great because I wasn't going to have enough dice to really use them a lot. So I should, probably should have dropped one of them for my asthma, but I didn't, so there you go. So here I will show various photographs that I took with our armies while I discuss my uh, game plan. So um, I haven't played Ogres before, this will be my first time that I can remember, and uh, I don't have a lot of experience with them, but I know they're tough, and I know that a lot of times people will design their army around seeking all their points into one unit, and then protecting them in the rune banner, and, uh, and then uh, use them pretty much either to deny points or just to crush face. And so I know that nothing in my army can really uh, go head toe to toe with his main unit with all his special characters in it. So I'm going to try to use my harpies, my shades, and my dark riders on my right flank to kind of just draw them out, keep them out of the battle, and maybe, you know, just waste their time. Meanwhile, I would like to get my executioners into combat with his cavalry, but again, I don't think I can go you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in a direct confrontation, so I'm going to use my other cavalry, my other Dark Riders, to kind of uh, pull them out of position, and hopefully I can get a flank, flank charge, because if they charge me, uh, it's just uh, it's just going to destroy my unit, I'm sure. So that's my game plan. I'm going to try to mop up all his other units for points. I should be able to get those Nobblers pretty easily. I'm going to hopefully get those Lead Belchers, and uh, then maybe at the end of the day, uh, he will only have gotten my... Uh, my uh, fast cavalry and my skirmishers. And so we'll, uh, we'll just uh, enjoy the game and we'll see what happens. So he gets plus one to roll, he wins first turn and he begins his movement phase. Everything moves up forward, uh, not, not anything too big. When he enters this mysterious forest, it turns out the mysterious forest is a wildwood. I think he loses some knoblars. And then his cannon moves to get some shots on my fast cav. So this is the board after movement, and here we go into magic. So in the magic phase, he rolls really low for the winds of magic. The dice he does get, he just uses them all to cast a purple sun. Uh, I could just let it go through because I don't think purple sun will do a lot of damage to my army, but he doesn't get it off irresistible, so I throw my dice and I end up dispelling it. In the shooting phase, he has his ledge belchers target my large unit of spearmen. He's shooting through the trees at long range, and he ends up killing three of my spearmen. Then he moves over to his cannon. His cannon moves forward. He opens fire. He gets ten shots, uh, but he's th shooting through a forest, and then I just get lucky. He doesn't really kill any of my dark riders. I think he misses a lot and doesn't wound. Then I go into the movement phase here. I have my shades circle around because I want to start uh, picking off wounds on the cannon if I can. I leave my fast cow where they are because they're, they're set up already for my harpies to flee through when I move them up, and hopefully this will be the beginning of my game plan where I'm drawing that large unit away from the main battle line. 
On the other side, I move my Hydra up to hopefully get those lead belchers. And then my Dark Riders move forward to coax the Morn Fang into charging them. That way they have their uh, flank exposed and I can attack them in favorable uh, means. Then the rest of my army inches forward a little bit, not very much, because I don't want the Morn, Kate, Morn Fang to get a long charge. And then I go into magic. So the first order of business is to protect my fast cavalry because they play an important role in my strategy for this game. So at the beginning of the turn, I gave them the 5 plus ward save from the shrine, and now I give them glittering scales to improve their save to 3 plus in case he shoots. Next, I use my big spell on the large unit since they don't have the protective banner on them, and I just hope to get some sixes on some characters. Uh, so I pass it. I don't get it off on irresistible force, but he's unable to dispel it. And as a result, it goes off, and then they lose three normal guys, but I don't get any of his characters. So the, the other part of the spell that I really like is it gives the unit and everybody within six inches stupidity. So I'm really hoping that I get lucky and he fails one of his leadership tests. And then finally, I give um, Enchanted Blaze to my Shades to just help them shoot at that cannon, because it's going to be kind of hard to kill because it's tough to six. Uh, so I give it to them, and I think I do one wound. And that's the shooting phase. So the Yogurts begin their turn by declaring a charge against the Harpies because they're in their way. And this is the beginning of hopefully the snowball effect where I just pull that unit further and further to the right. So I go to flee, I roll three dice, pick the highest two, and then he catches me. I only rolled a five. So, I mean, this happens. I really probably, in hindsight, probably should have just kept my fast cavalry closer to them. Uh, but I didn't, and so, you know, it happens. On the other side, my uh, fast cav flee, but I was playing too loose. I brought my Hydra up, if you remember before, and now he was in range to get charged. He uh, passes leadership test, and I'm forced to flee, because I don't need those Morn Fang on my far left, uh, and then hitting my Spearmen and my Executioners from the flank. So I flee, get lucky, and uh, I don't go off the board. Hopefully I rally next turn. And I could use my Hydra for other things. And here we have a picture of where the ogres are when they're pulled out of position. Uh, for whatever reason, he didn't reform it. He wanted to continue facing the fast cavalry. Uh, maybe he thought they were more of a threat than they were. I don't think he's ever played Dark Elves before. And then his cannon moves to take some shots at the scouts. Here you see where the Morn Thing end up after they're pulled out of position. And also, I feel like he made a mistake here. He shot, probably should have charged with his lead belcher to push my Hydra off but he wanted to have them available to shoot with. Uh, so there you go. And now we're going to move on to the magic phase. Oh yeah, and then the nobblers move up some more. I think they might have taken some more casualties from the Wildwood. He begins his magic phase by miscasting. He was casting the regeneration spell. It was a bubble effect. It affected his nobblers, his big unit, his cannon. Uh, so he rolled double sixes. It ends his magic phase. And he takes some damage. He does a small blast, but uh, the ogres have regeneration, and then he rolls some ones to wound, and so they they can uh, they're pretty sturdy. So ogres can take a miscast pretty easily. Not really any uh, consequences for what he did. And then we go into the shooting phase. He shoots the hydra. This is just reinforces the idea that he probably needed to have charged it. I mean, if the goal was to use them to kill the hydra, then he could have easily just pushed it off the board through charging. And then we go over to the, where the shades are, the cannon opens up, and he kills three of them. Uh, I roll my panic check, they fail, and then they flee off the board. So I kick off my turn by giving the executioners the plus one attack blessing from the altar. Uh, I declare a charge with the executioners at the morn thing. I need to roll a nine. Unfortunately, I roll a three, so I move two inches forward. Uh, luckily, I rally both my hydra and my dark riders. I don't have a picture of it, but I do move the Dark Riders into the forest. I hope to cause the Morn Thing to charge, and if I'm lucky, fail, and then I can have a second chance of uh, charging the Morn Thing cavalry with my executioners, probably in the flank. I move into the magic phase. Um, in the magic phase, I cast Searing Doom first. My opponent lets it through, it's only d6. I do one wound, and then I cast Final Transmutation at the large Ogre Death Star. Uh, I get it off on Irresistible. Unfortunately, I roll a 12. I lose two wizard levels, including Searing Doom and the Final Transmutation. So there goes all my magic offense. Um, but I do kill two ogres, 
and the BSB. So maybe not worth it for the ogres, but definitely taking out that BSB is awesome, especially now that he has to take stupidity. So hopefully he fails one of those. And then finally in the shooting phase, my Dark Riders who stood still on the right flank open up on the Iron Blaster, and I happen to do one more wound on it despite it being tough, having armor save, and having regenerate. So lucky me. This is what the board looks like at the beginning of his turn. If you can imagine that the Dark Riders are actually in the forest in front of the Morn Fang. Uh, he begins his turn by taking stupidity tests because I cast Final Transmutation. Everybody passes except for his Iron Blaster, who moves forward three inches. Uh, the Iron Guts themselves declare a charge against the Dark Cavalry, the Dark Riders, I mean, and they fail, of course, and they move forward into the woods. And I don't remember what those woods were. And then the Mornfang Cavalry uh, declare a charge against my Dark Riders. I run. He tests to redirect his charge, and he passes, and he hits my Executioner. So that's probably bad news for me. I really was trying to avoid that, uh, but there's not... I don't know. I just uh, I need to practice more on uh, using my fast cav and my skirmishers to pull people out of position, because right now I'm not doing a good job of it. But this is good practice. We go into the Ogre Magic phase. It's fairly uneventful. His Slaughter Master has Death Magic. He's facing the wrong way because of the failed charge, and all his spells, if I remember right, are fairly short-ranged. Um, so his uh, Butcher has Ogre Magic. He makes sure to have the Regeneration Bubble spell up. I think he might have miscast, but I don't think, again, he's tough, and then he gets Regeneration on top of it, so I don't think he loses anybody. Uh, we go into Shooting. His... Uh, Lead Belcher shoot my Hydra, doesn't do anything, and then he can't shoot with his uh, Iron Blaster because it's stupid and moving forward. So, this is what the combat looks like before we do the, the results. I'm really worried. I've seen and heard how damaging um, a charge from the Mornfang Calvary can be, so I'm pretty worried. I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm going to lose this. So... This is what it looks like after combat. Wow, I just completely wiped them out. I killed them to a man. Uh, I kind of underestimated the fact that I'm weapon skill 5, I have hatred, I'm strength 6, I'm striking initiative order, and I happen to have that plus 1 attack from the last turn. I gave them the blessing. So he comes in, he kills 15 of my guys on the charge, or maybe it was 14, can't tell, maybe it was 13. And then I strike, and I just killed them all. So it was great. My uh, my BSB got two wounds in and helped kill the one guy that already had a wound on him. And the rest of my guys just mobbed him up. So Mornfang can be really devastating. I mean, their impact hits really did a number on me. But, you know, executioners who are striking at initiative five, I guess they're made for this type of unit. So at this point of the game, I'm looking at the board, and I'm examining my options. Uh, the Morn Fang Executioner combat uh, really surprised me in the sense that I beat him in his turn. Uh, so I'm kind of thrilled about that. Uh, I have to decide, do I want to look to see, do I have an option to attack the meat of his unit, because it's been weakened a little bit through magic, or do I continue with my game plan of stealing points away from the rest of his army? Do I send my Executioners toward the Ledge Belchers, which you can see here in this picture, is what I choose to do in the end. But uh, as always, I keep in the back of my mind to look for opportunities to engage the meat of, of uh, my opponent's army. Because, I mean, that's the fun, that's, that's one of the fun parts about Warhammer, is to, to have the meat of your army fight the meat of your opponent's army, if possible. Like, if it's, you know, you don't want to just throw the game away, but you, you want that engagement. It makes for a really good game. But I lost my level 4 is power. We're down down to a level 2. I don't have any offensive magic spells, and my executioner unit took a lot of damage in that combat against the Mornfang. So with his army still having 3 out of 4 uh, characters in that unit, I just don't see how I'm going to win that at all. And I'm sure, if I remember correctly, he had uh, his tyrant with like the fencing blades and the glittering scales, so he's going to be really hard for me even to hit, even with Hatred and Strength 6. 
So at this point, I go ahead and just commit to my original battle plan. I'm going to take out the Navars. If I can get to the lead Bethos, I'll take them out, and I'll try to squeak out a win that way. As long as, you know, his uh, meat unit isn't worth a ridiculous amount of points. So this is what the game looks like at the end of my charging my movement. I declared a charge with my uh, little spearman unit into his Noblars. He stands and shoots, kills a handful of my spearmen. I fail, but I move my Dark Riders into position to maybe flank him later on. So here we go into magic. I almost forgot to mention that my Dark Riders that were on the right side who fled from the, uh, the large unit of Iron Guts, they failed the rally and they ran off the board, so they're out of the game. In the magic phase, I roll Snake Eyes for magic, which is actually really beneficial for me because I have the Sacrificial Dagger and Power Darkness. I use my dice to make more dice. He only has one dice to dispel, so it really gets in my favor. I cast, um, I cast um, Enchanted Blades on the Dark Riders to help them hit more and kill more Noblars. And I give my Executioners the Invulnerable save and the uh, 3 plus armor save from Glittering Scales. So, because uh, I know that those will probably be his next target for shooting. So in the beginning of Ogre turn 4, he has no charge to declare. He goes straight into movement. He moves his Death Star unit around so that it starts to head back towards the main of my army. He then moves his Noblars in a way that neither my Spearmen nor my uh, Dark Riders are facing his flanks. That way if I charge him, they're both front attacks. And then finally, he moves his Lud Belchers over a little to get a better shot at my uh, Executioners. He moves it so that all his shots avoid the forest. Uh, but with a 3-plus armor save and a 5-plus invulnerable save, I'm fairly confident that I won't take too many casualties. So we go into uh, Ogre Magic Phase. Nothing much happens. He's already used his Hellheart also, and I don't think anything happened. We start with his Cannon here. And he chooses a target that goes through here, my Executioners. Uh, it doesn't hit them all. I think it hits about four of them. And then after the Executioners, it goes here through the Spearmen. My um, Sorceress makes her lookout, sir. And so at the end of the Cannonball, this many casualties are done. The Ogre Kingdoms end their shooting phase by having the Noblars kill one Dark Rider and the lead belchers killing two of the executioners. I begin my turn four by declaring a charge against the lead belchers with my executioners. He opts to flee. He does this for two reasons. One, he doesn't think that the lead belchers can go against the executioners, especially in the face of the uh, Morn Fang getting killed by them. And two, we found out the store was about to close, so we have to end a little bit early, and he wants to save those points. After he flees, I just move my Hydra up, towards them because that's what I would have done and then my spearmen turn to face the uh, iron guts even though it doesn't matter and then my spearmen and my dark riders uh, declare charging against Noblars they both make it we fight the combat out I kill a bunch of Noblars they break I catch them with both my cavalry and my spearmen chase too just because it doesn't matter So this is what the table look, looks like at the end of the game. Um, this was a major win, I think it was, for the Dark Elves. I killed his Mornfang Calvary, his BSB Tyrant, and his small or his 30 Novelars. And he ended up killing my Shades, my Harpies, and one unit of Dark Riders. Uh, this was a really fun game. I enjoyed it. This is the first time I ever played Ogres. They're really tough. I felt like I did a really good job of avoiding the... Death Star uh, with thanks to my opponent because uh, I felt like he allowed himself to get distracted. When he uh, when he caught my Harpies, he really should have reformed to face the inside of my army, but he didn't. And so that was his mistake. I felt like that was a major mistake, but nonetheless, he made it and I was able to take advantage of it. I felt like he made a couple other mistakes. One that comes to mind immediately is that he didn't charge my Hydra off the board. Now, we can cut that a little bit more slack because the Hydra didn't really play a role in the game. He just kind of advanced forward and then ran away and then advanced forward. But I felt like uh, I felt like he really could have got more points. He probably definitely could have uh, caused me more problems than he did. 
and at anything, he probably made this a tie had he chased off the Hydra. Or at least made it a minor. I don't, I don't know what the point, I don't remember what the points were exactly. But um, this was a really fun game. I learned a lot against, against this army. I learned what I need to work on more. I really need to work on how I use my fast cavalry and my skirmishers. I don't tend to use them uh, in a way that really helps me uh, draw out the enemy's threats. Uh, they only worked in this game because my opponent uh, helped me out in that regard. So, um, yeah, it was a fun game, and I'll try to have another battle report sometime soon.